And Likewise. I'm looking, I'm looking in the background and I see all those guitars, man. Yeah. I mean, do you make guitars or what do you do? <laughs> no, I um, I play them. Um, so that's my that's my thing. Although I was called a luthier or uh, not a, not a luthier, but like kind of a a wannabe luthier. <laughs> what what is, a, what, what is a luthier? So a luthier is somebody who makes guitars. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. And uh, I was telling them about a guitar that I had that I, I was essentially refinishing the guitar. Um, so that was uh, a very unique experience. You can't see that guitar right now, but it's, it's similar to this one right here. Yeah, that's, that's um, a nice looking guitar. Yeah, that's, that's my most expensive one. That's my Les oh, Paul. Yeah? Oh, oh, oh I, I knew you had one of those, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to. Yes. Everybody, every guitar player needs to have a Les Paul yeah. and a Strat. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And this one right here is a Tele. Oh, Telestar? Or a Telecaster. Telecaster. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you got Telecaster, Stratocaster, and Les Paul. Yeah, man. Les, yeah, Paul, the... Les Paul was smooth, man. He was sweet. Yeah. Yeah, man. Where? He, he, know, he knew what he was doing. Tell me about those. So you have some, it looks like some artwork behind you. Oh yes, well the, these are the, these are my uh, cosmic uh, sculpture pieces. Nice. And uh, they they came to me. Let me show you one up close. Uh, they they come to me in dreams. Yeah, nice. You know, they come to me in dreams, and uh, so uh, the, the 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 first the first download happened back from March last year, and. Uh, there was a big wall, and on that wall, all these tablets flew off the wall. And they landed at my feet, and the voice said, "These are for you. Mm. Share them with your friends and stay in your lane." <laughs> so that, that's great. So that's how the, that's how the journey started. Oh, well, that's awesome. So, do you um, do you feel like there's um, some meaning? Like, do you derive some kind of a specific meaning from each one? Well, that's a good question. Uh, yes and no. Um, I do them in series of nine. Okay. And uh, like the nine tone scale, you know, okay. like, like, like the, the uh, augmented third or augmented seventh going to the ninth because they're nine numbers. You know? Yeah. And so um, <clears throat> the meaning that the use here is these pieces are designed to raise human consciousness. Although the, the human mind likes names, I don't really give them names. I just, I calibrate them you know, what I call um, cosmically. In other words, like say the uh, Nautagon has 1,800 degrees in it. So if a piece has two or three or four octagons in it, then the, it fre the frequency at which the artwork vibrates is three or 4,000. Got it. Which, which is, you know, that's what I do. So these, these are not trophy pieces. These are, these are, interactive pieces got it excuse me yeah that's and it's uh interesting there's definitely some depth to them some 3d yeah that's that's yeah. that's the idea that's how it, I, originally they were i had no idea i could do this i originally just had two-dimensional pieces and i wanted to see how it would look if if i were coloring well, anyway, i wanted to see how it looked in 3d that's how it started i started building and getting better but uh mm. that's that's what we are so, no. now, so, 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 how did you get into the guitar stuff? Oh man, that's a that's a rich question. So, I think my so I'm the youngest of five siblings. Yes, and I think a lot of it had to do with um, just seeing. You know, I had a lot of admiration uh, for my uh, brothers and sisters, and I think all but one of them at least attempted to play the guitar. Okay. And uh, so I, I saw that, I saw them doing that. I'm, I'm trying to think of when one or the other happened because what I was, um, my grandparents had a piano at their, at their house. And when my grandfather died at the, I was about eight or 10 years old, uh, we inherited his piano because I, 
uh, I was kind of, I showed an interest. So when we would go over to their house, I would plunk around, on oh, the right, piano, right, 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 right. you know, and so I was the only one of the family that showed any interest in, in the piano. So we got it. And so I learned how to play the piano, at, you know, kind of a, kind of a young age. I took a few lessons, but I think what was happening is sort of out of the, you know, I'd be playing the piano, but out of the corner of my eye, I'd be looking at that guitar over in the corner, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. And so there was just kind of a mystique about it, you know, and a, um, yeah, there was just a kind of a fascination. I think there was, um, it's kind of hard to separate like family history from all of this because um, my, in my family, there was a lot of um, alcohol and drug abuse. And um, my dad was very much an authority figure but then the, you know, the brothers and sisters, they all kind of rebelled against that authority. Right, know? right, right, right. And, right. And, and part of that, and so this was in like the mid to late 70s. And so a lot of that uh, rebellion um, came in the form of drug use, long hair, um, you know, rock and roll. Uh, you yeah, know, right, right. Sex, sex, drugs and rock and roll, right? <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> so, know. Yeah. Gun, gun, was it Guns and Roses, right? Uh, and that came into, you're right. That was definitely part of it eventually too. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I just, I saw, you know, music was, was an attraction because of that sort of forbidden fruit kind of thing. And, um, and uh, yeah, so the, uh, maybe a way of, of rebelling of sorts, there was just something about the guitar, even seeing pictures like, you know, you, back then, of course, it was albums and you would some of them yes, were those yes, albums yes. that you open up. Right. And there's pictures of the band and yeah. pictures of them playing guitar. And I was just like, man, it was just something magic that I wanted to be a part of. So, okay. yeah. So I started I think I started I was about 15 years old when I started playing guitar. Oh, OK. And uh, yeah. And um, started out on acoustic, just acoustic guitar, because that's what my my brothers had, they had acoustic guitars. And so uh, my next young oldest brother, he gave me uh, one of his, or gave me his acoustic guitar for Christmas one year. Okay. He's like, well, I'm, I'm not playing it. So, and I, and I was always playing it more than him anyhow. <laughs> right, right, right. So here, take it, take it. Take it. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Just, just take it, do what you want with it. Uh, and then, but my dad was um, very much against rock and roll music because he or he was against the electric guitar because he associated the electric guitar with rock music which in his mind was devil worship music really yeah yep deep <laughs> deep dude yeah oh yeah 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 um and you know and i understand i mean he he was um you know he was going through aa as you know himself uh the whole you know a couple of our family members were going through uh, recovery programs. And I know part oh. of it was just, he wanted to protect his kids from evil, I guess, right. you know, yeah, that's, right, right. You know, and, and that totally makes sense. And if that's what you believe, then, you know, beliefs are a powerful thing, right? Yes. So, they are. yeah. And so I eventually I bought an electric guitar and he about disowned me. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But he, I think, you know, like everything, he just needed to see me like, okay, this kid is normal. He's a normal human being. He's not right. worshiping the devil and right, he plays right. electric guitar. You know, it, it was the same thing when, uh, cause I grew up in, in St. Paul, Minnesota in that okay. area. Right. And then I, and then I moved to Chicago when I was about 26 years old Oh, and, you know, and there, and my, my parents, both of their impression of Chicago was, you know, I mean, Chicago is known today as the murder capital of the world. You know, uh, it's not the safest place in the world to live, um, you know, and so they thought when I moved here that it would be all gangs and, you know, all of this stuff until they actually came and visited and saw that it's really not that bad. Of a place. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. Yeah, I, I have to so, give you, I have to give you credit for educating your parents, right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's heavy. So, right? Yeah. And, you know, one thing led to another and, uh, you know, what was really fascinating was I went, I was really into rock and roll. And then I got into, um, 
classical music uh, via a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And we would uh, listen to classical music together. And I thought, you know, this is really fascinating stuff. I, I'm, I'm loving classical music. I love the guitar. And I thought, I wonder if I would love classical guitar music. And so I went to the library, uh, borrowed a CD of Andres Segovia, who is, you know, one of the sort of the pioneers, right, of modern day classical guitar. He's, he's the guy and, from Spain, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, he, and believe he, it or not. He's a good player. Oh yeah. I mean, well, he was, I mean, he passed away if, you know, it's been several years, but yeah, he was, he was the, I mean, a lot of people consider him like the, the godfather or the grandfather of modern day classical guitar, you know, oh, okay. where it's at right now. He, he played a huge significant role in, in sort of a resurgence um, of classical guitar in modern culture. So, um, but the fascinating thing was I, I was, bored out of my mind. I was like, this is so boring. Who could, who could listen to this? <laughs> you know, I, I was young and stupid, you know, what can I say? Um, well, well, yeah, your, your, your taste had not been refined yet. Right. Exactly. And, and so I, I actually started playing cello. I was like, you know, cause I wanted to, I was so fascinated with the orchestra and I wanted to get involved in the orchestra. So I was like, I'm going to start playing cello. Yeah. And, uh, and I did that for a bit. And then I, I started going back. I was, I decided to go back to college and just learn stuff about music. And then I realized, you know what? I, Cause I was about 20 years old. I was like, there's a lot of people here that are way, 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 way better than me. Um, I I'm not going to be able to do anything with cello like anytime soon. Right. And right. you know, right. And so I thought, all right. And then some things became more apparent. Like, you know, I really want to get a, a degree. Like initially I just, I just wanted to learn stuff. I didn't even care about a degree or a major or anything like that. Right, right. I was like, you know what? I think I want to get a degree. And the only two degrees that they offered at the University of Minnesota at the time was classical guitar performance or uh, like jazz studies, like jazz right. guitar. And I found jazz like really intimidating. Um, and so I was like, nah, and I had played a little bit of classical guitar. So I was like, you know, let me go the classical guitar route. And just through that, I fell in love with it. Okay. So, yeah. So that's been, so that, that, those are some of your transformations, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those are a few of them. <laughs> so, so what, what was the, what was the, one of the more challenging transformations you experienced? Oof. Um, well, that's a good question because they all seem like all of the transformations that I've gone through, they've all seemed so liberating, <laughs> you know? So maybe it was the, what led up to the, um, to the transformation. Um, I, I would say probably like the most, the most recent, the biggest and most recent transformation uh, happened, started happening um, about almost 10 years ago. Um, where I had pretty much, you know, what some people might say, oh, you've got it all, man. You know, mm -hmm. you've got, you've got everything. Um, and a lot of people um, will say, oh, you had all the, you know, you had the good life or whatever, but you, you didn't have God and that's what you were missing. Right. But in my, I mean, that's, that's something that I've heard a lot, but the, the fact of the matter was, is that I did have God, so to speak, you know, I was, uh, cause one of the transformations that actually happened when in my twenties that got me more serious about going and, and getting a, a college degree was I, you know, became a Christian, so to speak. Right. Whereas, I mean, I, I grew up, um, in a, I grew up as a Catholic. Um, so all of my life I had been around church right? <laughs> spirit, right? Exactly. <laughs> and then, and when I was about 20, I, I was introduced to some people. We started studying the Bible more and I was like, oh, so like, I felt like I had been missing some things. And so I like, at that time, I, it's kind of when I ended up identified with like really becoming a Christian, right? And was, was very serious about it, was very involved, um, in my church for a long time. As a matter of fact, the reason that I moved from my hometown of, you know, Minneapolis, St. Paul to Chicago 
was because I had been invited by the church that I was a part of, or I'm actually still a part of. Um, uh, I was invited to move here to be a part of what's called an arts and entertainment ministry. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So it focuses, you know, uh, we didn't have that in Minneapolis, St. Paul, because it was a much smaller church. And um, so I got here and, you know, so over the period of about 20, 25 years, um, I did a lot of incredible things. I mean, I played um, at some amazing places, you know, that I probably on my own may not have been able, you know, to, to do or to have those opportunities. Um, I met my wife, you know, incredible wife. We had, you know, we've got two amazing, incredible girls. There you go. Um, you know, and so this incredible life, I'm, I'm 43 years old. I'm married to this incredibly awesome woman. You know, I, we have two amazing, absolutely perfect children. You know, uh, I've got a business. Um, I'm, you know, I was serving at that time. I was serving as the worship leader for our church. Okay. You know, so, so I wasn't just like in the pews, you know, like showing up every now and then, but I was leading and I had served in many leading capacities within our church but something was wrong that okay. something was like very much wrong because I was like, I was miserable most, most of the time. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Very, very uh, difficult. Uh, was hardly ever happy. Uh, I mean, I was frustrated, angry, um, anxiety, just stressed out, um, you know, struggled with thoughts of suicide very often. And, um, so it just got to the point, you know, where I was like, my wife and I talked and it was kind of like after the new year, when people start making new year's resolutions, I was like, you know what? I, we both agreed. I was like, I, I need to seek out some professional help because there's, I was like, I know, I know I'm not clinically depressed that I was sure of, but I was like, but I'm certain there's something going wrong here. There's something missing. There's right. just, you, you know, you just feel it. Right. Yeah. I was like, and the biggest feeling that I had was, I feel like there's, there's something that I'm supposed to be doing, but I don't know what that is. And I'm certainly not doing it. Okay. Um, you know, sort of maybe a, a little bit different calling of sorts. And so I, I reached out to this guy that I knew that I had actually gotten counseling from like 20 years prior, you know, previous uh -huh. to that. I said, Hey, you know, this is what I'm going through. Do you have any suggestions? I thought he made, you know, might turn me on to somebody like a therapist or something like that. And he's like, you know, actually I'm, I've gotten out of therapy and I'm doing life coaching now. And, you know, if you'd be interested, um, we could do some sessions and dude, that's what started the whole transformation Okay, uh, was doing this life coaching. And I've been, it's been almost 10 years now that I've been, and still working you know, with this guy and uh, still uncovering layers of damage, you know, that have been done. So, so what, what, what are these damaged layers? What, what are you talking about? Right. So let me grab a drink real quick. Um, so one of the, one of the, I think biggest areas is that um, just uh I guess maybe one way to put it would be giving away your power, right? Like letting other people make your decisions for you. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, that was something like, I understand as, as a very little child, like that's, that's what you need, right? You need a right. parent to, to kind of help guide you and, and these kinds of things. But, you know, like with my dad was a great example of somebody who did not approve of me being interested in music, you know? Um, he, that was, I wanted to go to, um, there was a, a new school that was forming in the Minneapolis area, uh, called guitar Institute of technology. Really? Um, yeah. And I, and it was like, I was one of the very first people to ever audition for this place. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and the guy was like, yeah, you're in man. I mean, I was, I was seriously dedicated. I was like, this is my dream. And my parents would have none of it. Like, you know, they just thought that was a foolish decision. Um, and uh, so, you know, lack, a lot of lack of support there. And, you know, whatever, whatever you learn internally, just 
various coping mechanisms yeah. uh, that you learn, you know, when you're, when you're living in chaos, you know, you have to learn to cope somehow. Uh, and I think that was, I think music has been a huge, just coping mechanism for me my whole life. So, so let me get it straight. So are you saying that you were using the, uh, uh, maybe consciously or unconsciously, you were using the music as a, as an outlet to get rid of all that, that stuff? Yeah, it was, you know, it was the only seemed like safe way to go because I, like I mentioned, I was the youngest of five and, um, all of my older brothers and sisters, like they were sort of all grouped together age wise. And then I came along about five years later okay. and they had done all the crazy stuff. They had done all the crazy partying and all the drugs and, uh, you know, all the stuff. And, and so that by the time I came along and got to that age where I could even entertain thinking about doing something like that, it was already, oh no, you know, it was, oh, right, right, dad, right, right. you know, it was like my dad's like, hey, if I ever catch you using, you're out of here you know, kind of thing. And so what else do you do? <laughs> Sam? I got you. I got you. Yeah. So, right. So the music was a major coping, uh, you know, outlet as it was a security blanket um, uh, in, in actually in many respects. I mean, even um, I remember there was a, you know, a, a girl that I was interested. She came over to my house and I just like, I grabbed onto my guitar and I just held my guitar because I was like, I felt secure. Like I was yeah. terrified right, right, right. Of, of what she might do or, or might want to do, or, you know, or something like that. And so, um, yeah, man. Let's get that, back to the church. Now you're in the church. You, yeah. you, you, you rock and roll in the church. You're the head man, all that kind of stuff on yeah. the outside, you know, on the outside you smile, but the inside you're crying. So what happened? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there, I mean, there's some specific things uh, around, hmm, I think, okay, so one of the things that was, um, I guess, maybe a paradigm that people had was that if you had a talent, that you had to use your talent for God, okay, and what that meant was that you were to use your talent for the church. Of course. Right? And that's what it meant to use your talent for God. Now, I always wondered like, okay, well, my wife is really talented when it comes to mathematics. Why aren't they asking her to be like a math teacher for the church? <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so there was, there was a, a lot of years uh, I could go back. So to the beginning, when I first joined the church, yes, there was, um, there was, uh, an individual there who, I mean, like literally this was just within the first couple of weeks of me being a part of the church. Um, this guy came up to me and he, and he was the sound engineer for the church. Okay. And he, and he, and he, he comes up to me and he points at me and he goes, you're a guitar player, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah you know how to turn on an amp, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Come with me. That's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly what he said. Uh -huh. And so what he did was he trained me how to operate the sound system, oh, you know, the PA good. system. Right, yep. Right. And as soon as I was trained, he left the church. Oh, <laughs> deep. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, there I was like all of a sudden the guy in charge, of the, of the PA system, you know, and, and what that turned into over the, over the years. So I think I forgot to mute my phone, but um, what that turned into over the years was um, a lot of volunteering. Uh, okay. You know, uh, we had, like I said, I was very involved in this church. It wasn't like I just would show up on Sundays what, like I did with my Catholic what, church. What, what motivated you? Well, that's a different that's a different beast, the Catholic church. But what motivated yeah. you to, to get so involved? Why were you so involved? Well, I think that's a fascinating question. It's such a great question because um, I thought, I, I mean... You know, I mean, at the time I was like, hey, I've I've been set free. I've come to know the truth, you know, 
Um, I know that I, I was like, I was religious before, but now I'm actually a Christian. Now I actually know the truth. Hey, and you know, to some extent, yes, definitely to some extent, there was some in, internal transformation for me. There was a lot, probably a lot more external transformation than there was internal, um, but there was some internal and a, a lot of it was, I mean, I did stop to some extent, at least for a while, I stopped struggling uh, with, I've, I've struggled with suicidal thoughts my entire life. Um, it's just, you know, come and gone to, to greater or lesser degrees. Um, so, so the question is, were, were you a samurai in your prior life? No idea. <laughs> I was just making a joke about it. Oh, got it, got it. Uh, oh, right, right. Because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, residual. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Echoes, echoes of a previous life. Yeah, right. That's right, hilarious. Right. Um, yeah, no, but I. So there was some, you know, there was some transformation. I felt a, a good deal of joy. I felt here's something that that I really felt confident that I could give myself to, like, I really believed it. I was all in, you know, and I was, uh, I was very enthusiastic, you know, about it. And, um, there was probably, I think probably the reason for the involvement may have been different at different times, but I, I, I honestly believe at the very get go, it was pure, you know, I, I think there was, there was, there was goodness there. Like, I think eventually a lot of it was just fear and I, and I, and pro, you know, probably, I mean, you know, we're talking evangelical Christianity here. So we're talking about, Hey, if you don't repent and get baptized, you're going to hell for all of eternity. Okay, so let's, let's, let's delve into that now. How yeah. does that work? I mean, come on, man. If, if you don't <laughs> repent, repent from what? Or, I mean, how does that work in, in that, in that uh, environment? Sure. Well, you know, obviously there's, there's some things that, um, you know, I mean, we, I, of course I could, I could share some Bible verses or whatever. I'm, I'm sure this is pretty common knowledge for everybody, but you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like the Bible is written in different, the different copyrights of the Bible. Sure. Yeah. No, I, yeah, no, I believe me. I get it. <laughs> and it was written, it was written thousands of years ago by people in a completely different uh, situation, completely different <laughs> paradigm, completely different. Yeah. I totally get all that. Um, I, I think for me, what it was. So for example, like one, one of the things that um, like I eventually kind of followed in the footsteps of my brothers and sisters um, when I was about 18. So it was after I left high school, that's when I started experimenting. That's when I started smoking pot, you know, that's when I started getting high and I, um, I would, uh, you know, I would experience um, feeling like, and this was, you know, sort of before I was even quote unquote a, quish, a Christian, there was a sense of like, boy, I, I don't know, this doesn't seem right. You know what I'm saying? I would, I would get high and then I'd be like, oh no, this is totally right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, right. And, and then I'd come down and, and I'd be like, Ah, that, that doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem yeah. right to, to do that, you know? And so, um, you know, and there's all, I mean, there's, I think there's a bunch of things in general that people would, you know, society in general would agree. Yeah. It's kind of bad to do that. You know, like murder is a bad thing. You know what I'm well, saying? But, but you, I mean, you know, it, 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 these are social mores. No, right. No, I'm, I'm, and I'm just generalizing. I'm just saying in a sense, like, uh, you know, cause you had asked about repentance. What does that mean? And it's yeah, simply yeah. like, you know, Hey, take a look at your life and the things that you know, you shouldn't be doing. Let's, let's actually stop doing those things. You know, yes, like right. you're, you know what I'm saying? It's like, Hey, you're, you're, you're thinking that it's not right to smoke pot. Well, guess what? You're right. So why don't you stop <laughs> kind of a thing? You know, why don't you repent? And so there was that, I think that, um, that sense of, um, there was a sense of joy, you know, when, when you start doing what you believe is the right thing to do, you know, you've been sort of incongruent for quite some time. Cause like I said, I grew up Catholic. So I knew quote unquote, what was right and what was wrong, so to speak. 
And, but I wasn't doing what I thought was right. And so there was that incongruence oh, and yeah. a lot of angst, right? Yeah. And so then you get sort of more aligned with that. And of course, you're naturally going to feel relief. You're going to feel some joy and excitement about that. And you're surrounded by a community of people. Now, I think the kind of the big thing at that time was that um, it was so different, right? There was like... I think a lot of people were used to like, okay, um, you know, we know what what's right and what's wrong, but nobody ever really paid. No, like nobody actually lives the life. You know right, there you go. We right, just, we right. just, we talk about it on church at, uh, right, exactly. It's all talk yeah. at church on Sundays. And then, you know, the next thing you know, everybody steps out and they're, you know, smoking out right in the parking lot, you know, <laughs> this kind of thing. So I had found a group of people that were like, actually living the life, which really blew me away. And, you know, it's like, oh, hey, I'm all in, you know, and I'm, I'm not only am I all in, but I'm all about, hey, let's get everybody else in too, you know? Um, so that was, you know, some, somewhat of a transformation. Um, and then I was willing, at least for a while, uh, there, as a matter of fact, there's, so there's a, a, I'm sure you're familiar with the Psalms, um, Everybody, everybody's at least heard of the Psalms, like, the, you know, King David wrote all these, uh, these Psalms. And one of the things that he wrote was, he said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. And so what kind of what that meant for me was, hey, I would rather, you know, be broke and volunteer all of my time and talent for the church than sort of be in the world, so to speak, like, and playing, you know, devil worship music and making a lot of money. Is that, you know what I'm saying? So that was so, kind so, of my perspective. Okay, so when, when did this start to unravel? Because the, you, were, you were unhappy. Right. You had these, these negative thoughts. Yeah. Well, I think, it, I think it started unraveling a long time before I started getting the life coaching. I think things that just kind of reached a fever pitch you know, by the time uh, that I eventually reached out, there's a, a saying, um, you know, nobody will, uh, nobody will change until their desire to change has become greater than their desire to stay the same. Right. And, right. And that was, that was the thing for me. I was just like, I can't go on living like this. This is miserable. So now, um, so at that time, we, we, you say you were, you were broke, you, you didn't have uh, resources to support yourself. How, did, how is that working out? No, so that's uh, that. That wasn't my case specifically. I was just referring to in general, uh, right? Like just sort of that, you know, sort of that teeter totter. Like, hey, got, would, oh, you, you. would right. you rather be broke and at least be right, or you know, sort of right with God, so to speak, or would you rather be, hey, I've got tons of money and I'm super affluential, but my soul is a wreck and I'm going to hell and all of that let's, kind of let's, stuff. Let's do it all. <laughs> Well, and exactly. And that's kind of the, because when I started doing the the coaching, um, that's where, like, I thought having money and having happiness was inversely proportional. Oh, really? Okay. okay. Or, or even like having money and being spiritual was inversely proportional. Like you can't have money, you know, because there's that verse in the Bible that says, you know, you can't serve both God and money. Um, so that was... I understood that to be like, you can't be happy with both, you know, you have to choose one or the other. And, uh, and so it was, uh, you know, kind of this attitude of like, well, you just have to, um, you know, give, I mean, I, I worked jobs that I hated, you know, I've I, all kinds of different jobs that I've hated just to be able to get by so that I could do what I really loved, which was play music but the only way for a long time that I felt like the only way to, to really do that and to honor God was to do that for the church. Right. So, um, yeah. And then once I started getting coaching and, and, you know, him asking questions like, well, why can't you do both? Yeah. Right. You, <laughs> you know, know? Who, said, who said you can't. Right. Right. Exactly. And, and started going through like some of the characters in the Bible and, you know, like, do you know how wealthy, you know, these spiritual men of God were, you know, yes. probably the, 
you know, one of the wisest, you know, supposedly the wisest men in all of history, Salt, David Solomon. Solomon. Yeah. Yeah. So like, so like it was good enough for him. Why can't it be good enough for you? Exactly. Yeah. So this, this began a whole snowballing, just changing, transforming, becoming more empowered, um, you know, understanding, like I mentioned earlier, the power of beliefs yeah. um, and just, and not only understanding the power of beliefs, but really starting to understand what my beliefs were. And that, that is something that is just a continual process for yes. me, right. always, always uh, discovering new things. And um, a lot of that has just come through uh, it's, well, it's come through t- in my mind, like a couple of things, coaching and meditation, um, so my coach kind of points out the things, you know, maybe the blind spots, so to speak. And then, but I think just through meditation, I've been able to, uh, you know, cultivate an awareness of my subconscious, uh, at least a lot more, you know, than what it so, so ever has been. Here's a question. Maybe you can answer it. Yeah. Like, what is the subconscious? I mean, how do we know we have one? <laughs> They're just words, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're, right. They're just words to, dis- to, to, to try to describe something that's happening. That, yeah. you know, and, <laughs> and you know what? That's exactly what the Bible is to me now. It's, they're just words that are people trying to describe something that's almost indescribable. You know? Right. Because, I mean, you know, if you know, you know. Exactly. But we're living in this, this sort of separated in a sense plane where it's like uh, we have to communicate with one another somehow uh, you know what i'm saying like in the sense like when we get to a certain level of consciousness we're still not like i can't read your mind you can't read my mind you know what i'm saying we don't have ex- like we can nod at each other like oh yeah i know it's what that's like and that's about the best form of communication you know well, you know, there was one time I thought I wanted to read minds, but now I have the wisdom to know that it's not for me to know. Yeah, that's that's a, that would be a bit much. I, yeah, I can I can hardly handle my own mind. That's what I'm saying, right? <laughs> you know? If I'm going through this, I don't want to know what you're going through. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, please, yeah, <clears throat> spare me. I don't. Yeah, I got en- I got enough to deal with in here. <laughs> right, right. So, 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 so you went through the coaching. You- and then did you leave the church or what happened after that? So that is a fantastic question. Now, to, I, I have not like necessarily physically left the church. Yeah. Um, I, I, I still consider myself a Christian, but my understanding, like I've, um, I, I've, well, so one of the things that I learned from my coach is just how to open up and be open to other people's perspectives. Um, and, and just to think more, just to be more open, less judgmental, be more open, think oh, about right, it, right, listen, right. listen to what the person has to say. Right. And I've come across some teachers um, that have profoundly shaped the way that I think now um, from a Christian perspective, but it's much different than what I've been a part of. And it's much different than um yeah, like I would say, so the church, uh, it has, um, it has, I think the church has evolved to some extent as well, but not nearly at the rate that uh, I, I want to say that I have, but uh, not, you know what I'm saying? Not from a bragging perspective, of course, I've just no, been no, no. very fortunate. I've just yeah. been very fortunate yeah. to, you. You. Be, you know, to invest in myself and in my right, own personal right, right, right. growth and, um and to, and to learn these things and, and to grow. So um, my wife and my kids, we've, you know, we've all been a, a part of the church. My wife and I have been a part of the church for over 30 years. Um, and so, and sh- I don't know if my wife hasn't gone through the coaching that I've gone through, you know, she's seen my growth. She's kind of in a different place altogether. So it's, but I, I, I guess the important thing is, is that, you know, decisions like that are, are are something that you have to take the whole family into consideration, and um, 
What decisions? What do you mean? Uh, about whether or not you're going to leave a church or not be a part of a church anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so um, what I've, I guess what I've done is I've, um, to some degree, I've, I've grown, I think, spiritually, despite, um, you know, the, the church environment. I actually, what's, what's happened because of the, uh, the pandemic is I've actually gotten a job preaching at a different church. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, I, I don't know exactly what the future holds with that whole thing. If we, if we'll stay a part of it, um, well, I asked that question because you, you gave the impression that, you know, you said people were saying you had it all and uh, you, whatever happened, you, what you need is you didn't have God in your life. So that's what I'm coming from. Like, yeah. yeah. So, right. So let me clarify that. So when I, when I say that, that's, I'm saying, that's just kind of a general saying that people yeah. when, you know, cause I've even seen, com- I remember this commercial. I'm not sure if it was from the seventies or eighties or something, but you know, it was this guy who was driving this really fancy convertible. Right. Mm-hmm. And he, he, you see him like having a great time, but then he stops and it's like, you see the kind of the brokenness in his, in his heart and in his face. And it's like, you know, he thought he had it all, but he didn't have God, you know? Right. So it's just sort of this general message, right. That, um, Oh, I see what you're saying. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like the reason, you know, oh. people go after all of these quote unquote worldly things, all of these guitars and cars and fan, you know, nice homes and, um, all of this stuff, but what they're really missing is God. And what I'm saying, what was happening with me was, you know, you would think <laughs> of all of the people, I mean, I, I, so I don't think this way, but I'll, I'll just say it because I know a lot of people think this way. I'm a white guy, right? And a lot of people think that, you know, oh, white guys are privileged, right? Uh, that's, that's a kind of a stereotype. I, that's one that I hate, but right. it's, it's just a stereotype of society. Mm-hmm. I have a college education. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a fairly tall person, like I'm six feet tall. You know, because some people are like, "Oh, I'm I'm disadvantaged because I'm short," right? So Napoleon didn't think so. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so I, I essentially what I'm trying to say is, in in sort of you know, con- sort of traditional, conventional wisdom, society would think, "Hey, I've got everything going for me. I'm I'm a tall, fairly you know, I'm not you know, I'm." fairly good looking. I'm not going to be on the cover of GQ or anything like that, but you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I I have a lot of things going for me. Yes. Externally speaking. And I did as well, you know, college educated, tall white guy, uh, got your own business, amazing wife, amazing kids, leader in your faith congregation. You would think like, what more could you ask for? What more could you possibly ask for? You know what you could ask for. You know what that was. Exactly. You. (laughs) Right. And and maybe at the time I, when I first reached out for coaching, I was like, I don't know, but something ain't right here. You know, stop the train. I want to get off kind of a thing. Yeah. You have to do that sometimes. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, once I started realizing that I had been neglecting. um, No, you you hadn't been, you weren't neglecting, you were hiding. I was what? Hiding. Oh, hiding. Yeah. Well, that's that's a great point. Yeah. All, that, all those things you were doing kept you away from, you know, getting inside. <clears throat> yeah. You know, and it's that's a tough that's a tough th- and that's very much a character trait of mine, you know, to say yes to things that I don't necessarily really want to say yes to. Okay, then then don't. And I'm and I'm <clears throat> getting better at that. I'm getting better at that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah. you, you don't have to do that uh, with me with me if you don't like it. But here's a question for you, Steve. Um, what is a Christian? Hmm. Whew. What is a Christian? Well, I mean, we'll look at the word itself. Let's break it down. You know, yeah. it comes from the word Christos, right? Christ. Right, right, you're right. Somebody who, right, takes after Christ, right? Or no, no. The Christos in Greek means enlightened one. 
right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I... Well, all I all I can tell you is what I've been indoctrinated. So with. Right, I, I, that's what I was. I know that. I mean, yeah. you know, I, that's why I asked the question is because yeah. people say, "Well, I'm a Christian." Well, what is that? Those guys yeah. over there are not Christian. We're Christian. They're not. Well, how, yeah, you have some exclusivity. You have a, a a contract that says you're the only one. Yeah. Well, and that's that's kind of one of the things that drives me absolutely crazy about Christianity is that everybody is trying to prove why they are the right ones. Yes. Why, why, you know, why they have the corner corner on spirituality, so yes, to speak, yes. you know? I mean, doesn't that speak volumes to like the, 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 the problem? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that that's, I think what, what's happened though with me is that you start to become more aware of things and you're like, Oh, Oh, okay. I get it now. And it's almost like, hmm, that's just, people are going to have to fight that battle, you know, in the sense of like, until they, and I guess what I'm trying to say is I can't go in and fix it. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not not your your job to fix them. Right. It's just an awareness thing. Like, Right. it's like being a parent, you know, it's like when I was a kid, I did not, I did we just don't understand when you're a kid, you do not understand. And I have, you know, teenagers now. And I, uh, every now and then I'll say to my daughter, she'll say something to me and I'm like, ah, I get it now. I get it. I, I get what my dad was going through. <laughs> yes, 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 <laughs> you yes. know, you know, and it's just, you'll get it someday too. <laughs> so, how, so how do you, how, how, how do you, how do you, uh, interact with her on that on those type issues um so yeah that's what i guess one of the things that i do is i'm i i try to help her discover things Mm -hmm. um as opposed to what i received which is this is the way it is, yeah, you know, right, right. And, and you, I don't care whether you like it or not. And I don't need to explain myself, you know? Right. 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 right? So I try to help her and, and she's, Oh my gosh, my daughters are amazing. I mean, we have, they're even questioning, you know, thing, uh, things, you know, like with the church, like uh, they were having what, you know, what they call a devotional. Right. And they were, it was online because of zoom because of the pandemic. And uh, my daughter came up to me afterwards and she was like, they wanted me to share what I thought about it, but I just didn't agree with what they were talking about. And so I was like, well, then tell them, (laughs) you know, right, right. you know, and that's because of, you know, the conversations, like, it's almost like we're in a good place because I, I can, I can say, okay, what did you think about this? You know what I'm saying? Like, let's challenge this. Right. Let's, thinking. Let's, let's look at it and see what it, what's up. Let's ask questions like the one you just asked. What is a Christian? <laughs> <You know? laughs> it depends, and, on, and depends on who's telling the story, right? Exactly. Exactly. And, and because of that, my, I guess, concept <clears throat> of God, like as, as I've grown just older in general, but even through this transformation, I, I feel like I can understand a little bit better. Like my concept of God is that, you know, he's, he's sort of, you know, watching everybody, watching how everybody develops, so to speak. And, and I, and I kind of feel like now that I, I feel like he's much less judgmental of people than I used to think he was. You well, know what I'm maybe, saying? Maybe because you're less judg- judgmental of yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's totally it. I mean, and that's I, that's just fascinating to me because I used to. Because like, where does it end then? Right. Because well, maybe it doesn't end. Well, and and that's the point, right? Because it's like if I've if I've matured that much in just yeah. a short period of time, and have just like whoa. And if you think of God as this e- eternal kind of a thing, then it's like, oh my gosh, like it, can you imagine a never ending ceiling on this understanding well, and let, grace? Let, and, let me ask you this question, right? Man is, is a finite, right? 
Right. Our, our bodies seems like maybe are. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a, we have a finite mind. Our minds are finite. Right. Yeah. So if that's the case, how can a finite comprehend the infinite? Yeah, you can't. So yeah. that, and it, we're going to close out with that because yeah, we've had an enjoyable conversation here. Oh yeah, this has been great. Yeah, you know, I'm 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 digging it, man. And, yeah, and like, totally. You know, like this is good stuff, Steve. And like, yeah, you know, I'm happy for you, and uh, you and your family. And uh, I'd like to come back again. Oh, how can people get in contact with you, by the way, in case they need your services? Yeah, you know, probably the easiest thing to remember would be the Dream Highway, thedreamhighway.com. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. So the the Dream Highway dot com right um yeah they you know contact me there's i have a podcast there um and do, do you have an email so it would be steve at the dream com. steve oh, at the dream com. yeah yeah cool man i want to put you on my list so you can stay in touch because uh, for sure you know as a cosmic sculptor i talk about cosmic stuff yeah, man. That's like, you know, all cosmic. Like, 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 you know, you know, there's geometry, right? Oh, I'm yeah. Talk, my my talk, wife is a math teacher. I know all about the geometry. I don't talk about geometry. I cause I, I talk about cosmetry. Okay. There you go. I like it. I like it. I have not heard that word, but I like it already. Well, it was given to me in my dreams. What can I tell you? <laughs> so speaking of which, can I ask, I just want to ask this real quick. So, yeah. cause when you said it was, this was something that was given to you. I, I had a vision of something once that was really, really wild. It was kind of like, it looked like a chessboard, and suspended over each of the squares of the chessboard was a vase, like a very large vase and out of the vase was coming fire. And I was just, it was like one of those things that just left an impression on me. And that was over 30 years ago that that happened. And I'm just like, whoa. Right. I know what you mean. Yeah. I don't know how to interpret dreams. Yeah. But I, I will say this, that, you know, fire, you know, there's some type of energy happening. A, a vessel, a vase, is, it holds something like probably, you know, let's say could be multiple visions of yourself. Mm. You know, if you, if you go through the, to the to the to the different uh, rows and angles of the chessboard in life, you know what I'm saying? That's fascinating because it's basically what you're saying is because they were all uniform, they were all exactly yeah. the same, right. you know. So it's kind of like, hey, whatever path you choose, you're still going to be you, and it's going to be amazing. Yeah, isn't that isn't that wonderful, man? <laughs> how about that? You know, you know and, you, so like, you know, how does going back to your daughter? I wanted to share this with you. How does a duckling learn how to swim? I have no idea. It follows a mother. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Man. Okay, Steve. So and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to shoot the raw over to you today sometime. And okay. then I'll edit. I have a few other ones to edit. I'll get it to you as soon as I can, hopefully at the end of the week. And, um, oh, I need a, you sent me a photograph, right? I don't know if I did, but I can. I certainly yeah, please, can. Yeah, because I want to make a thumbnail, you know, be you and I on the front page there. Yeah. Give me a, um, an image that you want to share. Yeah. And uh, really, Steve, has been just marvelous, man. Thanks for yeah, the time. Yeah, it's been great. You know, uh, you know, D7 and minor and all that good stuff on the guitar. <laughs> yeah, right on. Right on. We could, we, could, we could go out on a note. How does that sound? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. We'll, we'll go out on a D minor 7. How does that sound? All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Cool. All right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. That is that's that's very, very nice, very pleasurable. And again, thanks a lot. Really enjoyed it. In regards to your family. All right. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Right on. Great talking with you. All right. Likewise.